And welcome once again to The Verdict. Mick Cornett with Kent Myers. Glad you're with us, and I hope you enjoy the next half hour. We meet here every week discussing topical issues and meeting interesting people. And uh, today we have a person who runs one of the um, largest uh, natural gas companies in the United States and the largest business in the, in the Oklahoma. Well, and the largest independent uh, oil and gas producer in that's the United right. States. Larry Nichols is coming back for his second appearance with us. Uh, but he's, that's not all he does. He's got a lot of other irons in the fire that keep him very busy, and we're really pleased he'd give us his time. Larry Nichols, today's guest on The Verdict. Stay with us. In driving rain, blistering heat, and bitter cold, 365 days a year, 24 hours a day, Chesapeake drills non-stop for natural gas on American soil. Chesapeake drills more new gas wells than anyone else, and from those wells collects the most drilling information and acquires more 3D seismic images, leveraging every efficiency to improve the odds of finding more natural gas every day with every well we drill. The better job we do of discovering bigger reserves of clean burning American natural gas, the greater the prosperity of our nearby communities, our state, and our nation. And as long as there are more gas reserves to be found here in the U.S., we will never rest. Chesapeake. Natural gas wins the day. We'll see Meyer Eatman Tate. We're accountants. We do taxes, business valuations, estate planning, and consulting. And we're right here in Oklahoma, working with the owners of small and medium-sized businesses. Steve Wilsey and Stuart Meyer have the resources and the experience. We'll see Meyer Eatman Tate in Oklahoma City and Tulsa. Welcome back to The Verdict. Mick Cornett with Kent Myers. And Kent's going to introduce today's guest. Today we're really pleased to welcome back for his second appearance on The Verdict, uh, Larry Nichols. Larry is chairman and chief executive officer of Devon Energy, located here in Oklahoma City. He did his undergraduate work at Princeton University, got his uh, law degree from the University of Michigan, then went on to serve as a law clerk to both Chief Justice Berger and uh, Justice Tom Clark at the United States Supreme Court level. Quite uh, an accomplishment. Uh, he then joined Devon in 1970 and has been with Devon ever since. He has many industry activities that he's involved with uh, besides Devon, including currently being the chairman of the uh, prestigious American Petroleum Institute. Uh, he is involved in many civic activities, including just recently uh, completing a term of chairman of the Oklahoma City Chamber of Commerce. Larry, welcome back. We're sure glad to have you. Glad to be here. Yes, we are. Now, first of all, in general, how are things going at Devon and in the industry? Well, the natural gas industry and the oil industry is suffering uh, like every other industry in this country is. I don't know of anyone who's immune. Uh, natural gas prices are down and oil prices are down because the economy worldwide is in terrible shape. And that, of course, affects our business as it does all businesses. Mm -hmm. So what's the next step? What are you, you, what are you watching? What do you, what do you use to gauge the future for your industry and, and the rest of the economy? Well, we're, we, we have always run Devon on a long-term basis. Uh, we get through these recessions. Uh, this economy will end, and when it does end, we'll need all the natural gas and all the oil that we can get. Probably won't happen this year, but 2010, which is not that far off, 
is when most people think this recession will end and when those factories uh, get back to work and start turning on their, their uh, the lights and needing the, the gas for, for heating purposes uh, and the natural gas for all the things that you make natural gas with. Uh, we want to be there with the product to keep this economy going. A lot of talk about Washington and their take on energy because it, that can mean so many different things. What's your take on, on, on the current administration? It is not good. Uh, quite frankly, there are not a lot of people in this administration that really understand the energy business. Uh, and they're taking a variety of actions, both with very high taxes, brand new taxes that they're proposing, as well as restricting access in the places we can drill natural gas that potentially will only make prices higher for the consumer uh, in the long term because it'll shrink uh, the, uh, the supply of natural gas. Well, at uh, Devon, I've always kind of wondered about this. I know Devon is the largest independent oil and gas producer in the United States. Uh, just if you can quantify it, the difference uh, or the volume differences between Devon's uh, involvement in the oil industry on the one hand and the natural gas business on the other. Yeah, if you look at North America as a whole, we're the uh, seventh largest oil producer in North America. Uh, the other six are all the major companies that are bigger than we are. If you look at it in terms of natural gas, uh, Devon is the largest independent natural gas producer in North America, which makes us fourth overall. Uh, we produce more natural gas in North America than Exxon or than Shell. Uh, only uh, uh, BP and Encana and Conoco produce more natural gas than Devon does. The, the, let me ask another fundamental, really, probably elementary question to you, but I've always kind of wondered about it. Is there any, any difference in the way the industry moves on natural gas and oil, or do they pretty much always move up and down in tandem? They kind of move, I mean, the prices kind of move up and down in tandem, but not exactly, yeah. which is why we've always tried to be balanced between oil and gas. We're about 60% natural gas and 40% oil, and that gives Devon a lot of stability because the natural gas markets are more of a North American market where the oil markets are a worldwide market. Mm -hmm. And those markets, they pull each other, but not always exactly the same. The company has been poised for growth and has been growing for many, many years. You have plans to build a building in downtown Oklahoma City, and you're building it for more employees than you have today. So obviously you're bullish on the industry in general looking into the future, or at least in Devon's part of the industry. I am. You know, short-term bearish uh, because we're going to go through this recession. Uh, but the building will be completed three and a half years from now. And so you have to sort of ignore what the current condition is and ask what's going to happen three and a half years from now when we complete it and what will our, our needs be then. Mm -hmm. And looking out uh, at that time frame, uh, we are bullish and we're charging full steam ahead on the building. Uh, in that regard, I noticed uh, in the newspaper an article that, I, that caught my eye and my interest uh, about the, how this uh, downturn in the uh, economy may end up uh, helping you on the cost of building your new building. Can you talk about that? Sure, there is a silver lining uh, in building costs because as all costs are coming down, as our revenues are coming down, the cost of building a building is coming down. The demand for steel, the demand for concrete, the demand for the services of all the, the electricians and plumbers and the architects and everyone else who are behind a building, uh, those are coming down and those people are hungry for jobs too. So we see a, a, a cost savings in the building. Uh, I take it then you're still uh, new enough in the stage of building the building that you haven't put those things out for contract yet. We're in the process of doing that. Uh, we plan to start construction uh, sometime this summer uh, on the garage uh, and some of the infrastructure underneath so it won't be anything exciting, mm -hmm. yeah. uh, but it's important for the building. Well, so. it'll be exciting to watch it start. It, it's exciting for us, but it's not uh, exciting and you're going to see steel coming down to the ground real quickly. <laughs> we got to go down before we go up. <laughs> In, the, in this many year process of deciding to build a building and to decide what type of building, what have you learned in the, the construction business and the design business and the architectural business that I assume you didn't necessarily know having run a, a, an oil and natural gas company for all these years? Oh, it's always exciting when you get into someone else's <laughs> business. You know, while I know a fair amount about the oil and gas and, uh, business, uh, to get in the construction business and the different types of glass and the different, uh, the, all the complexities of building a, a very large building. Uh, 1.9 million square feet uh, is a very complicated business and it's interesting to watch those pros do their business and uh, mm -hmm. learn a little but not to get in their way. <laughs> I suppose you asked your, some of your colleagues in other, in other communities who have built large buildings what steps you should be taking, what you should be watching out for. Is, is, there, a, is there a lot of give and take in, in those types of questions? Oh, there's a lot of give and take and, and we have toured, I've been on some tours with the architects 
uh, and the developers to look at other buildings and other sites in other cities in Chicago and New York, uh, in Charlotte, North Carolina, a variety of places to see what works and what didn't work. So it has been an inter interesting and very educational process. Are there any particular uh, differences in building a tall building in Oklahoma with its weather and geography and the like uh, than perhaps building the same kind of uh, structure somewhere else in the, in the United States? I mean, tornadoes and the... Oh, they're all different, but you know, the, the Gulf Coast has hurricanes and the West Coast has earthquakes, so everyone has, uh, you know, their own peculiar problems and we certainly have ours, uh, but none that are really yeah. particularly challenging. What about uh, uh, this uh, downturn in the economy and uh, Devon's employment? Are you having to lay people off or are you still adding people like you have been? Uh, where are you kind of generally in that mode? No, we have not had any layoffs. In fact, Devon in our, our history ever since 1971, we've never had a layoff. Uh, recessions have come and gone, but we've never had layoffs and uh, certainly hope we don't have mm -hmm. to this time. What is your employee footprint in, in Oklahoma and in the United States and in the rest of the world? We have a total of 5,200 uh, 5, employees uh, here in Oklahoma City. We have 1,700 downtown and then approximately 1,000 in Houston and 1,000 in Calgary. And the rest are in the field in various places, uh, about 300 in, in the area around Fort Worth where we're uh, the largest gas producer in the Barnett Shale. Well, Oklahoma City is lucky to have retained Devon for as long as it has, and we hope it's forever. But you must be constantly uh, bombarded with... Uh, uh, enticements from other places to try to get Devon to move. Uh, does that uh, occupy any significant amount of your time? That occupies zero percent of my time. <laughs> <laughs> I think all of our viewers are glad to hear that. <laughs> what percentage of your, your work takes place offshore and what, what, what uh, percentage takes place onshore? Offshore, we're both in the Gulf of Mexico and offshore Brazil and offshore China and actually in the, uh, in the Caspian Sea in Azerbaijan. Um, and that takes about Oh, 15, 20 percent of our total budget, uh, not quite that, about 15 percent of our total budget is in that area. And um, generally, are those reserves larger in nature? Because I assume it's more costly to, to drill offshore than it is onshore. The cost, particularly in the deep water, where some of the major discoveries are, the costs are staggering. Uh, the daily cost just to get the drilling rig is $500,000 a day. Uh, that is a major cost per day. A single well can cost well over $100 million in one well. Mm -hmm. So it is, it is very expensive to drill. There are potentially large structures out there that could serve the United States very well. Is the geology different offshore than it is onshore? Is, is, there, is there something fundamentally different about drilling or is it just the depth that you have to get through? It's just the depth. Uh, it, it's the sheer depth and the pressures you're dealing with in dil drilling in, in waters that are two miles deep, 10,000 feet of pure water. Uh, drilling a 30,000 foot well is present some technical challenges. Let's get it to a break. Larry Nichols, the CEO of Devon Energy, is here with us today on The Verdict. We'll be right back. I am Shay B. Cannon, Special Olympics Athlete of the Year, and I am Chickasaw. I have scoliosis and problem with my joints and my arms. It just amazes me every day to see her here whenever the doctor said, you know, that there's a good chance that she may not be with you for very long. The competition, it's real good. I throw my softballs far and I get a ribbon. In the next Special Olympics, I will run faster, throw the softball farther, and I will win. And I thank God every day that I am blessed with her because she's my little angel. <laughs> I'd like to thank the Chickasaws and my friends and family for being there and loving me just the way I am. Home values are down in some states, but not in Oklahoma. Oklahoma's home values have increased 4.2% during the past 12 months. Unlike some states where home values have decreased as much as 20%. Good thing you're in Oklahoma. There may be real estate problems in some states, but there has never been a better time than now to buy or sell a home in Oklahoma. One of the most affordable states in the country, Oklahomans are buying and selling homes every day. And an Oklahoma Realtor can show you how. Good thing you're in Oklahoma. 
That land next door was a mess. Take more than a lawnmower to revive that land. I heard the oil and natural gas people was cleaning up old oil sites, and it wouldn't cost us a flood nickel. Oh, yes, sir, it was quite a revival. The whole church showed up, want to make a playground for the kids. <laughs> it sure is a blessing. Welcome back to The Verdict. Mick Cornett with Kent Myers. Our guest today is Larry Nichols, the CEO of Devon Energy. And you have recently uh, been elected or assigned the job of, of running API, <laughs> the American Petroleum Institute. Congratulations on that. Thank you. And what does that uh, entail? And give us, uh, our, our viewers a little bit more uh, information about API and what their, what their job is. Sure. The American Petroleum Institute is a big trade association in Washington, D.C. Uh, that traditionally has been the, the, uh, run by the major integrated oil companies. Uh, they have been broadening out over a period of time and have uh, to try and really forge a, a industry-wide position. Uh, and I was the first non-major to ever be uh, elected to be head of that uh, organization. And well, what's the term of office? Excuse me. For two years. Two years. No, uh, <laughs> well, it's, two it's, pretty tough years. I two suspect. very tough. It's years. one of the main jobs to just uh, communicate and, and to let uh, people in Washington know about the industry and, and the positives of, of, of having solid energy policies that can allow the industry to grow. Exactly. Uh, that is the job, and it's it's a, a challenging job because there, there are a variety of, of myths that really exist in in Washington. Uh, and indeed around the country. One is that you can tax the oil and gas industry and there be no consequences. Uh, you know, major taxes on our industry are just like any other tax on any other industry. To balance the budget, you have to stop drilling natural gas wells and you have to lay off people. And they don't really understand that there are consequences and there are consequences that they don't like, uh, that they don't want. Uh, and the other myth is that there is just abundant renewable energy that's just around the corner and can, we can flip a switch and it'll be there. We need to work on renewable energy all we can, mm -hmm. but any study that has been done shows that 10, 20, 30 years from now, our historic sources of energy, mm -hmm. natural gas and oil and coal and nuclear, mm -hmm. are going to be the same basic resources that we're using. In, 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 in one way, the energy business is related to the automobile industry because the automobile industry is obviously run on energy. What's your take on, on Washington's impact on the auto industry and where they're headed with with uh, trying to get that industry back on the on, on its feet, I have no idea where that's going. <laughs> <laughs> you know that is that is of course difficult, and it's not just that it's the U.S. Oil, uh, uh, automobile industry. The the non-U.S. companies are doing quite well, uh, producing cars here in the United States uh, without uh, any any government intervention. So mm -hmm. it's not like we're going to run out of cars. It's those particular companies that are challenged. Well, with, maybe the term bailout is not the proper use, but I'm going to use it because people know what I'm talking about. If you're going to bail out the financial sector and you're going to bail out the automotive sector, does it seem like they want to tax the energy sector to try and help pay for the bailouts of those other two? Oh, absolutely. You know, we are the, uh, our industry has the bullseye uh, on our back, and it's because last year and the year before last, we did make good profits. This year, because of the drop in oil and gas profits, uh, prices, those profits aren't there. Mm -hmm. uh, and there's sort of this residual memory of how things were a year or two ago uh, that, that are not the reality now, which is going to propose a, ch a challenge for our policy leaders in Washington. Do you have any uh, <clears throat> targets in mind about where you'd like to see the price of oil or the price of natural gas, <clears throat> albeit above where it is now, but perhaps below where it, oh, where it ultimately got a year or so ago? Well, stability is what we really need. Uh, stability at any price uh, is a lot better than this yeah. volatility that drives the consumer crazy and drives us crazy because what do you what do you plan for and it's not so much that prices have gone up and down it's the relationship between our price and our underlying cost that need to get back into shape you are consistently in conversation with other Oklahoma City um, job creators uh, entrepreneurs what's your take on Oklahoma City's economy going forward well I think Oklahoma City is in relatively good shape uh, we're not immune, and if these large taxes are imposed upon the natural gas industry and the oil industry uh, that some in Washington would like to do, uh, it will have an impact on Oklahoma City and all of the Southwest, all of our state and all of Texas uh, that will not be helpful. 
you just finished a term, uh, a couple of your term as chairman of the uh, Oklahoma City Chamber. Uh, how was that experience and uh, how do you see uh, Oklahoma City progressing in the future? Oklahoma City Chamber is, is a fun organization to work for and it's because Oklahoma City is a fun city to work in. Uh, we have been blessed for, for several decades now with leaders of which you're one mayor uh, and a, a chamber and lots of business people that are all involved working together. Uh, we don't have that. You don't see that in every state. There are a variety of chambers that come through here. Our chamber goes to other places. So we really get a, a perspective of how Oklahoma City compares to some of the other cities uh, that are peer companies, to uh, our peer cities to uh, Oklahoma City. And they don't all have what we do, which is a group of political leaders and business leaders that work together in a very cooperative manner to try and build mm -hmm. the city. That's a fairly unique situation. Well, you mentioned that Washington may be turning unfriendly toward the industry. What about the state government? How about the state of Oklahoma and your dealings at the state legislature? How have they been with your industry? Fine. Uh, I think most people out at our state legislature understand the importance of ranching, the importance of, of farming, the importance of, of natural gas and oil, uh, all of the fundamental parts that drive wealth and mm -hmm. jobs in our, um, in our state. They understand the revenue side of it. That they do. Yeah. Let me ask you a little different question, focusing back on Devon. We know Devon is an independent oil and gas business, but Devon does a lot of things in this community that may be under the radar for a lot of people, like mentoring and uh, sponsoring uh, civic and uh, charitable activities. Can you fill our viewers in on a few of the major ones? Yeah, we try and do a lot of that, both in terms of giving the corporate dollars as well as providing leadership. Uh, we encourage any employee that wants to get involved in any organization that to by all means do that, uh, that if they get involved, we'll try and make donations to those organizations mm -hmm. and we'll certainly give them the time off to go do that. And I was recently at the Oklahoma Food Bank and uh, Devon employees were out there uh, volunteering their time uh, so we, on behalf of that and all the other organizations. Thank right. you for what you do. Yeah, Lawyers for Children is one and of course, the is it Mark Twain Elementary? Mark Twain. We have about 200, a little over 200 employees yeah. that uh, volunteer their time on, on Devon's time. Uh, to go out there and help mentor those, school, those big, children. Big contributions, not widely known, and thanks for telling us about it. You bet. Thanks, Larry. Larry Nichols of Devon Energy, our guest today on The Verdict. Kent and I'll be back with a final word right after this. All children deserve a life of hope and love, but sometimes they experience a life of pain, neglect, and abuse. When that happens, each child deserves all the quality, assistance, and representation that can be offered in our legal system. For more information, call 23CHILD. Oklahoma Lawyers for Children, helping to bring hope and love back to the lives of abused children. The good life comes naturally to Tulsa, where nature's beauty is matched with an eye for aesthetics. A legacy of neighborhoods graced with lawns and landscaping and handsome homes. A place that seems to have patented an ideal lifestyle. Bank First is loyal to the quality of life Tulsa assures its citizens, to the priority placed on education, culture, and growth. Loyal to builders who transform raw land into residential charm. Developers who see opportunity and add vitality to Tulsa's economy. Bank First serves both enterprise and private lives that need a loyal partner. It's how we help nurture this city's very good life. Bank First. Loyal to Oklahoma. Loyal to you. The Journal Record is pleased to be a sponsor of The Verdict. The Journal Record. Since 1903, the best source of Oklahoma business news and legal information.
Our sincere thanks to Larry Nichols of Devon Energy for joining us today on The Verdict. He is uh, quite a guy. Well, he really is a very, very busy person. He's got a lot of irons in the fire doing a lot of things, uh, but he never is too busy to uh, do nice things for mm -hmm. Oklahoma City and the community in general. Uh, I know all of the activities that uh, Devon employees are, are involved in are very helpful and uh, much appreciated and couldn't be bought uh, by the organizations they help. It's all volunteer mm -hmm. and it's a uh, they're really uh, good citizens. He gives much, and of course the company is very active, uh, both at the state legislature and also in Washington, uh, speaking on behalf of the industry and, and all of the different ways that energy companies are engaged with what's what goes on nationally and in, in, uh, in a sense driving our nation's economy. So uh, Larry gives much, and, and so does Devon. Well, there is uh, website information uh, about Devon and how you can find more information about this company in Oklahoma City. It is dvn.com. That's www.dvn.com. And next week, we're going to have John Richter on the show. Yes, our U.S. attorney is going to come, the chief law enforcement officer in the Western District of Oklahoma, so you'll have to be on your best behavior. <laughs> uh, going to talk to us about what's going on in the uh, U.S. Attorney's Office. There's been an awful lot of discussion recently about the Mexican cartels actually mm -hmm. being in, uh, in the Oklahoma City area uh, and being involved in some violence around here and uh, that's right in uh, John's uh, in jurisdiction. He's going to talk to us about that and everything else that's going on. John has been able to help secure and then help run some of the gang enforcement task force that have been going on in Oklahoma City with a, a high degree of success and I hope he'll be generous with his time next week in, in discussing those success stories. John Richter, next week's guest. Also, we have a website that we'd like you to go to and tell us about a show you'd like to see right here on The Verdict. It's our website, theverdict.tv. We'll see you next week. The preceding program was produced exclusively for the Cox Channel.